All right. Where do we want to start? So, uh, yeah, I just give, give Stephen the <laughs> he Last time he had some points. Yeah, I, I did list a couple of things I wanted to do. I didn't do them because I ended up actually doing some stuff for Christmas and I, I worked a bit on soccer trees, as you might have seen. Um, let's see what I wrote that I was planning to do and then we can see what we do with that. Uh, yeah. I have um, a discussion about claim and statement and I want clarifications about oh, that. Oh yeah, that's actually, that's a I, good point. So uh, one of the last things I wrote in chat was that I moved away from the need of introducing the distinction between statement and claim in the argument modeling binary context. But although I still like the distinction, um, I'm okay with calling both claim, but just considering one claim as part of argument modeling and another claim as part of what I think I called argument mining. Um, so maybe unless you have immediate questions about that okay. or do you just want me to introduce that better what it means? I think I think I'll need clarification, but uh, yeah, if yeah, I, I really have. I'm okay. At some point, we said claim was something people could agree or disagree with, and I get the impression that there's something else that I haven't put in my diagrams yet that I would call belief, whether somebody believes in that claim. Yeah. And, I, and that is totally another bounded context. And I wonder if this is what you're calling claim. At, at some no, point, I got no, the impression that the, the, the beliefs were something else. Maybe make a third mm -hmm. distinction, because I would argue that a belief is something I would add to uh, the argument modeling bound context. Uh, so there's three things. If you consider these a claim without uh, uh, where it's mentioned or whatever, like just a claim as something that we want to model outside of anything else, that's, I think, what we've so far been calling a claim. I think most of us are agreed on that. That's what we have in the current uh, entity relation model, no? No. The, 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 we're having the, the, third, the same problems all over again, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> let's see. Let's check out. I was in, uh, I started with the, the thought state uh, symbol distinction, right? Mm -hmm. And you bounded it to the claim domain and said, okay, so let's call, let's speak about claim statements or, or, or declarative statements as a special, a sub kind of symbol and claims as a sub kind of actually topics, which is a proxy for the thought. Um, and so for me, the claim statement distinction reflects the topic symbol distinction in a bounded domain. Uh, following me so far? No, I think I need to see the diagram again. Maybe you can share it while. Uh... Okay, let's let me. Okay. Um, uh, not this one, not this one. Uh, so let me just. This one, yes. Okay, so share screen. Desktop to this. Okay. Uh, so. so I think when we say claim in this diagram, we're talking about uh, the decontextualized symbol, uh, which is a claim in this case. I don't know whether you represent that. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. No, we're 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 not we're not on the same page at all. Uh, well, I thought we were. We are not. Um, the. Decontextualized symbol is just the symbol taken out. It's it's another symbol. It's still uh, the symbol side of the semiotic triangle, if you will. Whereas the topic or thought proxy as a the equivalence relation, uh, the, the, the equivalence class of the uh, symbol equivalence relation. That was kind of in the middle of the triangle, but closer to the thought. And uh, for me, claims belong there. There, what happens, after, there's this many to many relationship between uh, declarative sentences and claims. And uh, which is actually the specialization of the many to many 
uh, relationship between a symbol and a thought proxy. Um, the contextualized symbol is just about not, it's not about the equivalence relation, it's about we're considering it with or without the, its origin, its, its provenance. To distinguish, um, so when, if you look at the, the the first efforts in the glossary of writing what a claim is, there's no mention of uh, um, of provenance there. It it just points to no, the no, claim. Claim has nothing to do with provenance because claim is at the thought proxy level. The pro the, the provenance non provenance distinction is between the contextualized symbol and symbol in context, and the declarative sentence. I'm saying let's have it as a subclass of the, the contextualized, which, or not. I don't think that matters. So if if a claim is just a set of declarative sentences, which I think we agree on. A set of declarative okay. sentences. Yes. Well, it's nothing representative, more, nothing representative now, of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. It's let's a assume yeah. for now that's all it is. So okay. I think that's what we call a claim. It means that you don't know where the claim was stated. That means you don't know whether or not anyone believes in it. All of that is external to that. Okay. No? Or? Thank you. Um... So that's what, what I, I think most of us agree is a claim you know, when we talk about uh, argument modeling. The, 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 the claim is a set of declarative sentence which were agreed to be equivalent. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, it's like well, you model them to be equivalent, basically. That's what you're saying. As, as, yeah. as part of argument modeling, you're saying these set of declarative sentences are all the same claim. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, now, so far, so good. Then the distinction I always drew between statement and claim, and why I always uh, prefer to call the former, which has talked about uh, statement, and the latter claim is just because of linguistics, basically, where you say, um, Stephen claims A, where Stephen claims statement is false. Uh, and that whole um, collection, I called a claim. But so right. for, for, for the sake of... Uh, um, yeah. That's, and, th and this is where I, okay. this is a different use of claim. I would like to humbly propose once again, that we take a totally different approach here because uh, I do not see us ever getting anywhere with this approach. I think if we start from the bottom up, one use case at a time, and slowly refactor, we will get to where we want to go without, with using all the same term, without ever having to go through this, what I consider abstract and philosophical exercise because we we spent I, we probably have spent at least 20 uh, nowhere on it um so if we start with okay a user comes to the system and creates a claim by entering a sent entering a sentence then we already have an object called claim and we know it has a sense. If somebody wants to say, okay, somebody comes to the system and sees that claim and wants to add another uh, sentence that represents it using different word wording, then we establish and refactor saying a claim is this thing that has one or more sentences. And then if somebody wants to add, propose the next thing that happens, we can refactor. And we don't ever have to have this philosophical uh, discussion about symbols and whatever until somebody actually wants to add a symbol and it has to be a symbol. I think you misunderstood the intent of what I was, I was actually trying to explain indeed that we shouldn't talk about it. I was saying that it's a different mind context, which I could now call argument mining. So the whole point of explaining what I was explaining was to say, indeed, we probably don't want want that even in our argument model we don't want but i think even that is is an unnecessary discussion if we do it one use case at a time and then when somebody proposes a use case we can discuss whether or not we want this use case in 
the small smallest unit of the system, or we think we want that use case to be optional. If we want it to be optional, we can consider it like a separate subsystem or whatever. We can have that discussion at that moment when it's the most concrete thing possible. But when we're not anchored in very specific concrete things, we get nowhere. I'm uh, okay. First, my I understand the, the feeling of frustration that we're getting nowhere. My analysis of why we're getting nowhere is every time we're close to getting somewhere, we say, no, this is not going nowhere. Let's start from scratch with a new methodology. I think that is a problem in and of itself. <laughs> so I'd like us to push to conclusion with one methodology instead of restarting from scratch all the bloody time. <laughs> so that's all my right, but reaction. But if we do that, my, my proposal is that is the one that we take because I don't, I, 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 totally soured on any other approach. And I don't think we're going to yeah. get there with any other approach. Fair so. enough, fair enough. And, and my, you know, uh, but on the other hand, uh, you've been asking me, please motivate everything with use cases, right? And Steven has been asking me that, you, Tim, have been asking me that. And I do so. I do introduce use cases. And they kind, and, and I back my model my modeling with use cases. I use this for this use case. And we had the use case uh, last week about- Right, but- No, there's a concrete use case behind it. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't disagree that there are use cases for it. It's, it's more like, that, that was the whole purpose of this bound context. It's like realizing that these use cases are part of something we're not doing right now. And the use case indeed they did come up. Um, that uh, even even when you talk of a use case, Tim, like as a user, I want to add a sentence to your system. If you then don't distinguish between whether you're talking about a concrete system or you're just talking about what I now propose as a more useful bound context being argument modeling, then it's going to spin off into a whole, oh, but how is that user even allowed to do that? And what if it's already there and et cetera, et cetera. No, so, no, but it shouldn't spin off into all those things um, because the, the use case is a specific use case. And, and, and when it spins off into another bounded context mm -hmm. is when people are saying, no, I don't think right now, I don't think it should be.